Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, dear devotees. Please join us today in the study of Srimad Bhagavatam. Today we will be studying Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 1, Chapter 4, The Appearance of Sri Narada. So please join us for Little Hari now, followed by the invocation prayers, and then we'll be studying and discussing the various lessons we learn from this chapter. And we'll also learn about how we can realize the presence of Lordship even in these times, the Kali age. Hare Krishna. <laughs>
Krishna Devi would you please join us for the invocation prayers? Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Narayanam Namaskritya Naram Chaiva Narotamam Devim Saraswati Vyasam Tato Jayam Mudiriya Shrutam Swakatha Krishna Punya Shravana Kirtana Pridayam Tastohe Bhatrani Vidunoti Surasatam Nashtaprayeshu Abhadreshu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati Ruttam Shloke Bhakti Rubhavati Nashtiki Hare Krishna So please join us in the recitation of the first verse Krishna, dear devotees, so today we are gathered to study Srimad Bhagavatam Canto 1, Chapter 4, The Appearance of Sri Narad, where we also learn how Lord can be realized and, you know, service, means how we can serve Him, to please Him, even in this age, Kali age, the age of coral and hypocrisy. Please join us in the recitation of the first verse of Srimad Bhagavatam Canto 1, Chapter 4, The Appearance of Shri Narad. Vyasa Uvacha Iti Bruvanam Samstuya Muni Nam Dirga Satrinam Vridha Kula Pati Sutam Bahavracha Shanako Bravit. Translation by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami, Srila Prabhupada. On hearing Sutta Goswami speak thus, Shonakamuni, who was the elderly, learned leader of all the rishis, engaged in that prolonged sacrificial ceremony, congratulated Sutta Goswami by addressing him as follows. And, you know, this purport, so we will be covering this particular chapter today and in the translation the Yastev who is speaking. Hare Krishna, please join us for Guru Pranati. Namo Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prishtaya Bhutale Shimate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namine Namaste Saraswate Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nirmishe Shashunyavadi Pashatya Deshitarine Om Ajnana Timurandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasme Shri Gurve Namaha Mukam Karoti Vachalam Pangum Langhayate Girim Yad Kripata Daham Vande Shri Gurum Dina Taranam Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, dear devotees. This is a beautiful chapter, and especially when we hear about appearance of a great Acharya, Srila Na Naradji, right? So he is also referred to as Devarishis. He is the saint among the demigods. So in this particular verse, Shonakarishi, he is the leader of the sages at Namasharanya who are performing the great fire sacrifice for a thousand years. So sacrifice was being performed here for a thousand years. And what was the purpose of the sacrifice? To ward off the effect of this Kali age. To ward off the effect of this Kali age is this age is also referred to as Iron Age, right? And we talked about in the very first chapter, in the tenth verse. The sages revealed to Sutta Goswami, who is their speaker here at Namasharanya, that in this Kali age, there were many ill effects, and they listed these ill effects. So they revealed to Sutta Goswami that in this age of Kali, people have short-lived, alpayu. 
and kala was been they are quarrelsome so even for a small differences they create big quarrels and manda they are lazy by nature sumanda matyo they are less intelligent manda bhagi they are unlucky and here upradta and they are constantly disturbed so these are the symptoms of this age that they were referring to and in the first second and third chapter we also saw how the qualifications were established the qualification of the sages in nabasharanya as they were so willing to hear the glories of lord shri krishna that they would never get tired so they themselves revealed that which qualifies them to hear shrimad bhagavatam and then the qualification of the speaker was identified the suta goswami was following in the disciplic succession first he paid obeisances and glorified Shukdev Goswami, from whom he heard Shrimad Bhagavatam, and he decided to narrate Shrimad Bhagavatam at, to the sages at Namisharanya. In this chapter, Shonaka Rishi, he is congratulating Sutta Goswami, saying that you have you are very well learned and you know how to recite all part of the Vedas except for some. And of course, his father, Roma Harshan, was an, entrusted by Vyasadeva to. be responsible for the puranas so again the historical records so that also he had received learned and he was also disciple of vyasadeva so his father as well as he both were disciples of shila vyasadeva so when they reference that he is accepting shukdev goswami as his spiritual master that is instructing spiritual master his initiating for sutta goswami the initiating spiritual master is shila vyasadeva so here now shila purpa and the purpa reveals the qualification of the you know congratulator so one who is glorifying one who is addressing that we have such and such wonderful personality among us who will be talking about this so the person who is speaking telling the congregation about the speaker that person the congratulator the addresser the introducer means the person who is introducing the speaker also needs to meet some qualifications and this is with us to go shonakarishi so he is the leader of the sages so shila uh, prabhupad he refers to that uh, personality whoever is addressing and introducing the speaker should be first of all learned he should be elderly and he should be the leader of the house and all these three qualifications were present in shonakarishi so you know when we, someone comes to the temple and they are speaking generally the temple president who is the leader of the congregation addresses introduces the speaker to the congregation so that is something that we have seen now and then again and again and now he is congratulating and glorifying suta goswami with very choice words means he is identifying that you are very learned and is making everyone aware that sutta goswami is very learned and we have a great opportunity ahead of us that by hearing him we can all transcend you know the effects of this kali age the coming age where people will get attracted to the matter and they will when you are attracted to the matter you are away from your true being which is spiritual so these are two opposite ends and we are somewhere on the fulcrum now sometimes people say that if this is the qualification that everyone who is hearing shrimad bhagavatam has to be qualified then how does it apply to the current age when well, it's very simply given in the proper special approval that people should you know understand that this literature was written for the kali age so again it is revealed in this chapter that uh, even after writing vedas after writing all the puranas the upanishads the of the shrutis and smriti literatures shila vyasadev was not satisfied and he recognized even before appearance of devishnath he recognized that i am not satisfied it's not that because he did not have the qualification or he had some shortage in writing vedas no he realized that even after assimilating all the vedas and puranas and all the shruti ganthas it is the effect of the kali age is so that people will be attracted to matter and they will use the they will be attracted by the flowery language of the vedas to attain more sense gratification and that was the cause of his dissatisfaction so his cause was because the people in this age will be so fallen they will be 
having so ill effects of the Kali age that under the influence of the three modes of material nature and the influence of time, they would be attracted to seek further sense gratification, while the purpose is to seek spiritual advancement. So they will actually drive away from the main purpose of life. The purpose of life is to attain love of Godhead. And the process is devotional service. And before it comes to devotional service is the sambandha. One has to know why am I you know, performing, why should we perform devotional service? Is to understand that we are living entities, Jivera Surupoya Krishna and Nitidas. So he's satisfied, uh, dissatisfied. And so he realizes that it is because I have not glorified the devotional service of the Supreme Lord sufficiently. So that's his conclusion. Now here, Srimad Bhagavatam is also known as literary incarnation of Lord Shri Krishna. So that's also very important for us to understand that Srimad Bhagavatam is literary incarnation of Lord Shri Krishna. So we can realize that Srimad Bhagavatam is a form. So after Lord Krishna, he left for his abode, Srimad Bhagavatam rose like a sun and it's spreading the light. So people who are trying to get away from the darkness of this ignorance, of darkness of this Kali age, which is the ignorance of this Kali age, which is like darkness. So ignorance and darkness are considered similar because in ignorance you don't know what to do and when you are in a dark room you don't know what's what. So in ignorance and darkness, people who are trying to find their path back home, then they take shelter of Bhagavad Purana. Krishna Swadham Padyate Dharma Jnana Dvisa Kalonashta Drishamesha Purana Kadhanodita. So in this verse it is revealed that after Lord Krishna went back home, back to Godhead, it is Bhagavad Purana, Srimad Bhagavatam that spreads the light and Srimad Bhagavatam is referred to as like sun who, under whose light all the effects of this Kalon Nashtam Drishamisha. So people who are seeking direction, right, who wants to see things as they are spiritually, then they will be able to see through this Purana and this will cause revolution in our life. Now there is another aspect that has been discussed like why did Vyasthi write this scripture? And Shukdev Goswami spoke it. Now, there is a direct verse given later on, which can be referred. Anatho pashmam sakshad bhakti yoga madhoksha jay. So again, this is Lokasya jananto chakre vishwam samhitam. So he wrote, Srila Vyasdev, he compiled Srimad Bhagavatam for this Kari age. But people, they do not know, for people, because they don't know, that it is to engage in bhakti yoga of adhokshaja, of Lashya Krishna. So, lokasa janato. People are not intelligent, they are lazy, they have unlucky, so they would get light through this Purana and they would get the benefit. So it is Srila Vyasadeva's compassion towards the humanity that he wrote. And this aspect has been revealed in this chapter. So let's quickly go step by step. So we talked about the qualification of speakers and audience earlier in the first three chapters. In this chapter, the con we covered the qualifications of the congratulator that he should be learned, elderly and leader of the house or of the you know, arena. And then when Shonakarishi is glorifying Sutta Goswami, he is saying that you have learned all this and further assimilated it, having realized that knowledge. So it is not important that you know it. You have to apply it also and then come up with your realization. Srila Prabhupada, he instructed to all his disciples saying that when you study, you know, Bhagavad Gita, Srimad Bhagavatam, Chaitanya Chaitanya, understand the knowledge, apply it in your life and bring those realizations out. And that is the way to present it. So again, to address, to share it with others. We have to bring examples from our lives, from our realizations, from our experiences that pertain to the current times. And current times are not so good times because it's for the pandemic times. Yet at the same time, devotees, they see good in everything. At this time, when people can't go out, they cannot travel as much, one 
some good effects are visible, right? There's not as much pollution we can think of. There is more quality time. There is more time available to engage in the chanting of the holy name. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Ram Rama, Hare Hare. There is more time to study the Shastras, to study the scriptures. There is more time to engage instead of, you know, in this um, rash driving on the road and so many accidents happening, all those have gone down as well. Yes, pandemic has its effects, yet at the same time, we can make runs in ruins. So even in tough times, we can progress spiritually and it is again our focus that needs to determine what is our mindset. Our, is our mindset sense gratification or is our mindset to satisfy the senses of Lord Shikrishna, you know, senses of Lord Hrishikesha, who is the master of the senses. And accordingly, we have a great opportunity if we want to progress spiritually. So, he is identifying that please share this knowledge with us. And Srila Prabhupada in the purport says that we should avoid unscrupulous, deviant commentators. Why? People who are professional commentators, pros, professional reciters who are making their life by reciting and you know speaking on Srimad Bhagavatam, they are like snakes. And so a milk, a pot of milk, when milk is touched by a snake, it becomes poisonous. So we have to be very, very careful that we hear it in disciplic succession from a devotee of the Lord or one who is appearing in disciplic succession. Because in disciplic succession, it is not that the message is you know, changed. The message is same. And it has been presented through assimilation and realization of one in parampara as per the instructions of the acharyas. So we are like postmen, right? So the devotees who are reading Srimad Bhagavatam, who are studying Srimad Bhagavatam, and the preachers out there, they are all presenting like a postman. They are delivering the letter as it is, without changing its meaning. Yet at the same time, postman has two functions. He provides the letter, but at the destination, if people are not literate or people are not qualified to understand the message in the letter, they ask the postman to please read it to them and make them understand what it contains. And the postman can deliver the message, but he cannot change the message. Right? He makes it easy for the people to understand. So this is transcendental knowledge coming from transcendental world. When people in Kali age are in ignorance, then has been explained by, first by Srila Vyaste, further it has turned nectarian when spoken by Shukdev Goswami and having touched by Shukdev Goswami, have, having you know, spoken by Shukdev Goswami, Shukha means parrot, we talked about the history of Shukdev Goswami earlier. And it will continue on this chapter and for the, all the way to Cantodyne. So there will be many times his reference would come and we'll learn more and more about Shukdev Goswami that he actually splits into two personalities. I'm giving you a glimpse, a coming attraction. One becomes Grahastha, one stays Brahmachari and then further he is a self-realized soul. So not just Brahmachari. Sometimes people, they think that if someone is speaking on Shastras, the person has become brahmachari or vanaprastha or sannyasi. That is not true. These are just ashrams and the varnas are brahma, shatya, vaishya, and shudra. Yet at the same time, every human being, every living entity is jivera sarupoya krishna and it is an eternal summit of Lord Shri Krishna. So we have to look with equal vision. We have to understand it with that perspective. So the message must be delivered as it is and addressing specific audience time, place and circumstances. This reminds me of a story that Srila Prabhupada used to share that there was a you know, missionary, a Christian missionary, he goes to a place where there were coal miners and he's speaking to the coal miners. And after you know, very nice preaching session, he realized that people are not able to relate who Christ is, who Jesus is. So they're asking, who is Jesus? Because they cannot relate to Jesus without having a number. So he, at that time, realizes that. So he says, and when he gives the description of hell, he says, it is hot, it's humid, and it's dark. They're like, yeah, that's like a mine, a coal mine. It's hot, it's humid, and it's dark. So what's the difference? Hell is just like home in that case. 
he realizes that and then he says actually in the hell there are no newspapers and everyone's like oh there are no newspapers that is very bad so that was what mattered to them so the message has to be related to the you know audience out here next day Srila Prabhupada is glorifying the audience at Namasharana were all brahmanas he also gives various aspects with respect to that as we'll be covering now Shonaka Rishi, he poses three extra questions. Uh, there are three categories of questions. He is posing actually six questions, but these are not the six questions, same as in chapter one. So he's asking, you know, in the, he's requesting uh, Sutta Goswami to reveal that in what period and what place was this first begun? What was begun? Srimad Bhagavatam. And why was this taken up? The study of Srimad Bhagavatam. And where did Krishna Dvapana Vyas? The great sage gets the inspiration to compile this literature. And at that time, means again, when this particular reference comes, he's submissively asking. So that should be attitude. Now there's a difference, like we talked about in Purpur, Srila Purpa talks about the difference between, uh, you know, Atma Ram versus Householder will be covering that as well. So, Sutta Goswami, when he is revealing this question, he is revealing that as soon as Shukdev Goswami, so I am adding the history of Shukdev Goswami beyond what is in the chapter, yet at the same time it is said that a commentator or speaker on Bhagavatam should not try to show that he knows more than the previous Acharya, but at the same time to help people understand, we fill in the gaps. So I'm just filling in the gaps, which is where as soon as Shukdev Goswami, he took birth, he ran for the forest. He said I have, he was a realized soul. The effect of material energy was re uh, removed by the mercy of Lord Shri Krishna. So as soon as he took birth, he ran and he, were, he had the body of a 16 year old. <coughs> and as he ran, he went past, you know, the jungle, the trees, and there were some dancers taking bath. And then after him ran Srila Vyasadeva, his father. And Srila Vyasadeva observed that there were some dancers, there were some apsaras, there were some ladies taking bath in the waters. And as soon as they saw Srila Vyasadeva, they covered their bodies. Now Srila Vyasadeva was surprised because he was like about the age of their grandfather. He was, you know, father, grandfather. So he said, when my son ran by, and Shukde Goswami, he was naked when he ran by. You did not cover your bodies, even though, he, you know. However, as soon as you saw me, you covered your body. So why is that? So the dancers revealed at that time that his son, Shukde Goswami, was a self-realized soul. He was Samadarshi. He did not make any distinction between male body and a female body. So he was looking at all the bodies as the carrier of the body, of the soul, right? As the machine that carries, yantra, ru, rani, maya, made up of material energy. However, the sage being a householder, he made that distinction. Now, Srila Vyasadeva, Srila Prabhupada reveals, is a self-realized soul. However, since he is a householder, he has to make the distinction. While Shukdev Goswami as a realized soul does not make that distinction and he runs. And we also, you know, will be covering as how the one who becomes Grahastha. So Shukdev Goswami, he continues his journey while when Srila Vyasadeva sends his disciples to look for Shukdev Goswami and they sing Srimad Bhagavatam when he hears where well, Uddhav is revealing to Vidur. The specific verse that he immediately splits into two Shukdev. One returns back home, becomes a Grahastha, another one continues the journey and stays 16 years old for many, many years. So that is the one, it is the one who is continuing the journey, is the one who speaks to uh, Parikshit Maharaj at the bank of Ganges. Srimad Bhagavatam is spoken by him. So next question is, Shonakarishi is saying that Shukdev Goswami, he is a self-realized soul, and how was he recognized by the citizens when he entered the city of Hastinapur, now New Delhi, now Delhi, after wandering in the provinces of Kuru and Jangala, appearing like a madman, dumb and retarded. So 
Srila Prabhupada reveals three aspects that refer to sages that we should understand. A sage is not recognized by sight but by hearing. We also know that a fool is recognized as soon as he speaks, right? So similarly, so to know an intelligence, to know the elevation of a person, we should hear to the person, not just be attracted and be impressed by their looks or oh, his dressed very nicely. So that's a dress on top of a dress or he looks amazing. So that's the beauty of the dress. We are not supposed to be appreciating because the true intelligence is to appreciate what do they know and how we are benefiting in our spiritual progress. Are we talking about Krishna? So we would all, she should also be inquisitive to learn from the persons who are highly elevated in Krishna consciousness and hear about their realizations and the revealed scriptures. So the, those name form activities, pastimes of Lord Shri Krishna, that's the topic we want to focus on. Second is that a sage, a sadhu is not a juggler, he is not a magician. You know, he doesn't use word jugglery to impress us. He presents the message so that we understand it. Now, if we can understand simple words, better it is. So, Srila Prabhupada, he could have used many sophisticated words when writing Bhagavad Gita, but he realized that his Bhagavad Gita as it is, is meant for the current age and should be read so that people can easily understand. So, the expertise is not to make something very difficult to understand, but rather to make it very easy to understand so that more and more people can understand it. And once Srila Prabhupada was giving class in English at Mayapur, so there was a Bengali gentleman, so he said, why don't you speak in Bengali? Srila Prabhupada said, well, you can understand English, right? So why should you worry about what language it's spoken in? The importance is not the language, the importance is of the message, and that should be clear. We want to understand the message, we want to know the message, we want to understand the essence of the message so that we can implement it in our life easily. So, Shukdev Goswami was appearing like a madman because he was like Avadutta, he was you know, not caring about anything around him. I'm not referring to Avadutta Brahman, that is Lord Dattatreya, uh, the incident that happens in the 11th canto. Yes. And uh, so, and then the third aspect Srila Prabhupada reveals is that the a, a sage or a sadhu should not be allured, especially a sannyasi should not be allured by the glamour of a householder, right? Because it's very dangerous. It can cause one to fall down from the position. So these three important lessons, these important aspects of the lesson for the preacher, for the sages, for the sadhus, and especially for the sannyasis have been given. Now, another question, question number nine is asking, the category is focus on Shri, uh, King Parikshit, Parikshit Maharaj. So he's asking, how did King Parikshit meet Shukdev Goswami? You know, how did this happen? How did they get to meet? He got to meet and hear from him, Srimad Bhagavatam. And he's curious, why did King Parikshit, Parikshit Maharaj, he was very young. Parikshit means examiner. So he, you know, was all protected when he was in his mother's womb at that time, Uttara's womb. He was protected by Lord Shri Krishna. So he had another name, Vishnu Rat. Vishnu Rat is one who is protected by Lord Vishnu, Lord Krishna. So why did he give up all his opulences, all his kingdom, all his riches, all his, uh, you know, everything that belonged to him and he sat down at the bank of the Ganges to fast for until death. So to fast for seven days until death. So he did not eat, he did not sleep. He was just listening to Shukdev Goswami. So he's asking what could be it be the case? And now he reveals why is he asking, right? Sometimes people ask a question, but then their mind may not be revealing the reason behind it. So he reveals that, first of all, he was saved by Lord Vishnu. Second, he was a great personality. During his time, everything was very nicely arranged. Mother Earth was producing all the grains, the cows were producing milk, everything was prosperous. Even the enemies, even the other kings, you know, who, uh, you know, were not friends, he would come, they would come and offer him all the riches because he was employing everything in service of the lordship, in service of the welfare, in service of the humanity, not just humanity, citizens. And that means citizens does not include 
just, it's not exclusively for human beings. It includes the birds, the bees, the plants, everything. So all living entities in the kingdom are citizens. So he was taking care of them so nicely and everything was very prosperous. And then suddenly he gave up everything. So he wants to know the reason. Why did he give up everything? To fast until death. And that's great austerity. And he did it when he was young, when he was, you know, in a very opulent times, when everything was going on, suddenly, you know, this is a complete 180 degree reversal. So he wants to know, should Shanakarishi is putting this inquiry in front of Sutta Goswami to learn as why such a young, such a powerful king who chastised the age of Kali, the personified Kali at this age, and he saved cow from being, you know, beaten by Kali. So again, bull refers to dharma, the four legs of dharma are austerity, cleanliness, mercy, and truthfulness. So he had already, Kali had already destroyed, as we'll be hearing later on when Parishan Maharaj meets Kali, austerity, cleanliness, and mercy, and was hitting the fourth leg of the bull, dharma, which is truthfulness. So even truthfulness goes away as Kali age progresses. However, due to the uh, uh, appearance of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, the 10,000 years of golden age has already begun. So that began 500 years back and is going to continue for another 9,500 years. So we are in the golden age of this dark age. So we can understand the golden avatar of Lord Shri Krishna, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He has blessed our times and we should take this opportunity to quickly go back home, back to Godhead by studying, assimilating and practicing Krishna consciousness as given in the Shastras and as following uh, and also by following the instructions of the Vaishnava Acharyas and Srila Prabhupada. So now Shonaka Rishi after glorifying Parikshan Maharaj, he is glorifying these various characteristics and he is saying that Parikshan Maharaj was a first class devotee so he wants to hear about him too. So the sages at Namasharanya wants to hear about the history of Parishan Maharaj. And that is the major topic, that major part of Canto 1 where that has been discussed, the various activities Parishan Maharaj engages in. And we hear about his birth and so forth. Now, there was a question about when was it first written and what was the reason. So Sutta Goswami he starts describing that Srila Vyasdev, Srila Krishna Dvapanya Vyasdev, he took birth when the second age was merging with the third. So the second Treta Yuga was finishing and Dwapar Yuga was coming. So generally the four Yugas are Satyuga, Dwapar, Treta and um, Kali Yuga. However, when Lord Krishna appears and he appears you know, on the 28th cycle of the seventh Manu of cycle is the Chatur Yuga uh, cycle. At that time, Dwapar and Trita Yuga, they change their position. So it becomes Satya Yuga, Trita Yuga, Dwapar Yuga and Kali Yuga. The influence of time remains the same. The uh, leg of the bull means, which is the religion. So generally it is austerity, mercy, cleanliness, and then truthfulness. But during this time, it changes the positions. And there are Yagyas are still the same order for each of the ages. Well, let's stay with the topic. So again, Srila Vyastev, you know, his birth happened during the transition from Treta Yuga to Dwapa Yuga. And his mother was Satyavati, right? We talked about it in the setting of the scene of um, Bhagavad Gita class. And Satyavati was daughter of Vasudha fisherman. And Srila Vyastev's father was Parashar Muni who was also his spiritual master, the initiating spiritual master, Diksha Guru. And Srila Vyastev residence is at Shamya Pras at Badrikashram, where river Saraswati flows. And due to the influence of Kali age, the rivers they had approached Lord Vishnu, that people in this age will be so fallen, when they will take bath all, they will pass on all the sins. So at that time, Lord Vishnu said that some of you have already gone underground. So Saraswati is flowing underground and the scientists, they did some research and they saw that there's an underground river flowing, which is going under Rajasthan area and all. So Rajasthan, think of desert, but under there, she continues to flow, uh, coming from Badrikasham, Himalaya areas and so forth. 
So these are some of the things that have already been revealed in the scriptures. People are finding it now, but then they're like, okay, we already knew it, provided we take shelter of the scriptures, we take shelter of the Acharya. So again, the two type of Bhagavatas, the book Bhagavata and then person Bhagavata, pure devotee of the Lord. So we should hear from them, we should study under their guidance and we should repeat the message and the assimilated realizations as and when we can, you know, uh, practice it in our life. So, Srila Vyasadeva one day after taking bath and finishing his morning oblations, he sat down for meditation and he's Trikalagya. Trikalagya means one who knows the past, present and future. So he was able to see the coming influences of Kali age, that people in this age, they will be less intelligent, they will be constantly disturbed, they will be quarrelsome, they will not have long life, they will be unlucky by nature and constantly disturbed. So he became compassionate and so due to, so again it is said that in different ages this happens on the earth due to the unforeseen, unseen forces of time. So unseen force of time is, it's because of the cycle of time it happens, right? And that is the arrangement given. So when he saw that, he understood the influence of Kali age. So he understood that people will not be able to retain just by hearing. That all our scriptures are Shruti or Smriti. Smriti is remembering, just by remembering people could remember. And Sutta Goswami is an example where he heard Srimad Bhagavatam from Shukde Goswami. That's 18,000 verses. And he was able to, you know, recite those verses as is. So now, and the Puranas are known as the fifth Vedas, you know, the historical records. Srila Prabhupada in the purple reveals that Vedas versus Puranas are just like Brahmanas versus Parivarajakcharya. So, he is giving that information. Vedas require one to study by the meter, by a specific, you know, recitation, base and so forth. While Parivarajakcharya they are focused on the rasas, the essence, the teachings behind, you know, given in the scripture. Vedas are meant to, you know, get some results, they are result oriented to elevate one to a higher platform. While this path is faster path, the one taken by Parivarajak Charyas, which is to focus and spiritually advance and go back home. The goal of both is same because both emanated from Lord Shri Krishna, so Lord Krishna, he spoke the Vedas to Lord Brahma, who revealed it to Devashi Narad, who revealed it to Vyasadev. So all, all these, um, actually Vedas came from Parashamani to Vyasadev, Srimad Bhagavatam came from Devashi Narad to Vyasadev. So the goal is one and Srila Prabhupada says that realization is more important than parrot-like chanting, right? It is not that you can speak the mantra in a perfect way, yet at the same time we should make effort, right? When we hear Srila Prabhupada, he is speaking the shlokas, it seems so melodious. It is like music to our ears. So again, we should make an effort to follow the acharyas, follow the spiritual masters, so we speak them very nicely, yet at the same time we should not be parrot-like, you know, chanting, because realization is important. So when we practice it in our life, when we take to the chanting of the holy name, we, uh, we get purified with that association and we get realization. So when we go out for like book distribution, we are spreading this knowledge and it's so amazing that people who are pious by nature, people who are honest in their dealings, we do find some people, they just want to make, get the best deal. And it was so interesting that a lady, she was like, well, I want to get this book, but I don't have enough. Can I still get this book? So we know that it is more important to see the inquisitiveness of the person. So we inquire, you know, this is a perfect book to can you re reduce your stress, to purify yourself, to you know, elevate yourself to higher platform, higher consciousness. Yet she was like, yes, but I want that book. She was pointing towards Bhagavad Gita. We said, yes, you can have it because there is no restriction, but something should be given in exchange so that you get the potency to read it. And we requested her. So the only payment we ask you is that read chapter a day. And she was like, yes, that's very easy. Chapter 8, she said, how many verses are there? Now, the interesting thing, we were talking about verses, so that's how she was addressing. We said, most of them have, you know, 
less than 30 verses. Some of them have, you know, like second chapter, 16, and then uh, uh, you have 17, 18 chapters. They have really long, you know, the 78 verses and 72 verses. So she's like, oh, okay, this is easy then, you know, just reading. And it really, if you read Shimon, uh, Bhagavad Gita, you can read a chapter a day very easily. And, but just don't read through it, wait and ponder about what Lord Krishna is saying, what is the message behind it. We talked about today in the earlier class, what is the meaning of a karma? A karma means inaction. But then somebody can say inaction is no action. No, that's not what Lord Krishna means. He is actually telling us that it is the action performed with detachment from the fruits of one's labor. So that is a karma. It is not doing any action, but you have to still perform action. But these actions should be performed dovetail in serving Lord Shakesha, in pleasing Lord Shakesha. When we engage in that mode, then we have benefit. So that is where the essence comes in. And she has been doing this again. And we also encourage other devotees to join us for the daily recitation of Bhagavad Gita chapter a day or you know, even half chapter a day scenarios where people can join us and they can study with us. Now when he split, uh, Srila Vyasadev, he split Vedas into four. So the four Vedas were Rig Veda, Yajur Veda, Atharva Veda and Samu Veda. So Palasha Rishi, he was entrusted with Rig Veda, Jamini Rishi was entrusted with Samu Veda, Vaisham Payana was entrusted with Yajur Veda, Sumantu Muni Angira was entrusted with Atharva Veda and Sutta Goswami's father, Romahashana was entrusted with Puranas and the histories. Now Romahashana was previously killed before this incident of Sutta Goswami reciting Srimad Bhagavatam was killed by Lord Balaam. So that incident would also come. So yes, some incidents like that also happen. And then seeing, having split, and why did he split? That is being explained by Sutta Goswami that he did it out of compassion. That it, he thought that it would be wise that this would enable people in this age, Kali age specifically, to achieve the ultimate goal of life. Ultimate goal of life is to attain love of Godhead. So we can all go back home, back to Godhead. So it is for our benefit, Srimad Bhagavatam has been written. It is the essence of all the Vedas. It's the commentary on the Vedan Sutra and it is a literary incarnation of Lord Shri Krishna. Another form Lord Krishna appears is in his holy day. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Nama Chinta Mani Krishna Sachetanya Rasa Vigraha Purna Shuddho Nitya Mukto Abhinnatvam Nama Namina. So Lord's name is not different from him, all his potencies are there. So, and Mahabharat he wrote and the Puranas he wrote were meant for women and the laborers class and the friends of the Brahmanas. Now Brahman Bandhu, that definition is given. So the Varnas are based on the Chaturvarna Maya system, Guna Karma Vivasha, based on the nature, more so material nature, the influence of those one lives in and the activities they engage in. These are the two aspects that determine the criteria is based on this as to which varna one belongs to. So someone could be born in a Brahman family of a Brahman father, but if he has not gone through the you know samskara, he is not dvija, then he is referred to as Brahman Bandhu. I see Kshatriya son who is not a Kshatriya is called Kshatriya Bandhu. And generally if they are at a lower varnas, then it is referred in this manner. So Srila Prabhupada, you know, he wrote Bhagavad Gita as it is. And Bhagavad Gita, as we discussed, appears in the Bhishma Parva, 25th to 43, uh, 42. So, or 23rd to 40 in Bhishma Parva, it appears. And that is meant for this age. So again, he is spreading the teachings of Bhagavad Gita. He is making it easily available to all the world. In, and it has been written over 80 languages. So that is compassion of the Acharyas, the compassion of the spiritual masters who are bona fide representatives of Srila Vyasadev. They have been propagating this transcendental knowledge to all of us. 
And then Sutta Goswami, he is addressing, oh, twice-born Brahmanas. So he is referring to the Brahmanas who are gathered at Namisharanya. Because these Brahmanas are also very compassionate. They are performing yajyas for thousand years just to, you know, remove the effect of the Kali age. So, the, and we talked about the importance of Namisharanya. It is the spoke of the material universe, this universe. And any austerity performed at Namisharanya has thousand times more effect spiritually and so he was contemplating after having taken bath after assimilating all the vedas and puranas and after interesting to his disciples who were sharing it who were preaching and he, they were studying it and passing it on to their disciples and grand disciples he was still not satisfied he says that he had engaged himself in working as per the scriptures as per the rules and regulations for the total welfare of all people, he was not satisfied. And then he understood why he is not satisfied. See, Trikalagya, that's another characteristic. He could not just find that why, you know, he has done a great work, but why is that great work not going to be successful? Because he realized that people in this age will be more attracted to matter. They will be more attracted to sense gratification. They will more be lured by the sensual pleasure. Material energy will have great influence because of the effect of Kali. She would make everyone forget that Lord Krishna is the Supreme Personality of God. So they may get diverted from their true path. And you know, sometimes when people, they buy a car to go from point A to point B, and the first thing, they get the car out of their uh, dealership, and then they go on a pleasure ride, which doesn't have a point B. They just go, you know, driving wherever, and sometimes in the mud and stones and all that. And before you know, in due course of time, the vehicle has lost its potency to provide the transportation media that it was meant to be. So this body is just like Rantra Maya. It's a machine given to us. It's a dress given to us by material energy. And it's a perfect boat through which we can pass this ocean of nascent, this uh, darkness of, you know, of ignorance. And we can go back home, back to God, just by taking shelter at the lotus feet of Lord Shri Krishna, just by getting on that boat of Sankirtan Yajna. Chanting of the holy name, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So, as, as he was thinking, at that time, Srila Narad Muni, so he reached the cottage of Sri Krishna Dvaparya Vyasrev on the banks of Saraswati River. And just as he was regretting his defects. His defects were not related to the material he has written. His defects were identifying that by writing Vedas, he had attracted the people in the Kari age, who they will be attracted. He is not attracted. They will be attracted by the flowery language of Vedas and further engage in sen sense gratification. So he's identifying that defect that he is encouraging by writing it. So he's lamenting about it, he also understands that he has not glorified the Supreme Lord. And when he saw Devashi Narad appearing, coming to his ashram, he got up very respectfully and he worshipped Devashi Narad. He seated Devashi Narad very nicely and he worshipped Devashi Narad and gave him venerations equal to that of given to Lord Brahma. So this is where the significance is given in uh, Brahma Sampradaya. It's coming from Lord Brahma who received the spiritual knowledge, the Vedas, from Lord Shri Krishna through his heart. Right? Brahma Hidaya Adi Kavi. So Lord Krishna spoke the Vedas through the heart of Brahma. So that's how Brahma learned. And he passed on. He taught his disciple, his son, Srila uh, Devashi Narad. And Devashi Narad is representative of Brahma. So he is respected, he is to be worshipped and respected at, at the same level as Lord Brahma. So, Srila Vyastev, he gives him equal veneration as given to Brahmaji, the creator. So this is where the chapter ends. And, uh, you know, this is where we learn some amazing characteristics as how, you know, the Vedas, the flowery language of the Vedas, when taken up by people in this Kali age, can be you know, wrong to you. So the message is pure, but can be interpreted based on one's understanding. So beauty is in the eye of beholder. Yet at the same time, Shruti is the, is in the hearing of the hearer, right? So the message we take, 
we should also build up our qualification as hearers so that we understand the message as is and don't dilute it or don't deviate it from the main part which is to attain goal and the goal of life is to attain love of God. Hare Krishna, Tantra Shimad Bhagavatam ki jai Shila Prabhupad ki janand kori vashram vind ki jai nitai go premanande Hari Hari Bol. Hari Hari Bol, Hare Krishna.